Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a new segment I'm calling MTG Stories, where I just tell some fun stories from my time in Magic, and maybe other fun stories along the way, but this is the story of my first ever MTG Grand Prix. That was uh, Grand Prix Las Vegas in 2017. It was a great experience, and I just wanted to share some of the memories that I made along the way with all of you, and I really do hope you enjoy it. So basically, Grand Prix Las Vegas, my friend Connor, he comes over to me, and this is the, uh, I'm graduating from high school, and Connor is uh, like a year ahead of me, and he's like, uh, really into magic he's a good magic player and uh he's like do you want to go to grand prix las vegas with me um i'm getting some of all of our my friends our friends together so we we all went down me my friend connor my friend alex my friend tom and my big brother we're, we're all going to grand prix las vegas and of course we're driving to grand prix las vegas in the sketchiest car it's like an older car and it's a nine and a half hour drive from my hometown to grand prix at las vegas connor of course was the driver he drove pretty much the entire way so it was very impressive not gonna lie watching someone drive for that long and uh, then we all kind of rotated who had shotgun that was kind of a a kerfluffle shall we say but it ended up working out and we get to las vegas and the first thing we do is we go to the hotel because we of course went down the day before the grand prix actually started this was a limited grand prix back in amonkhet um and of course, before the Grand Prix starts, uh, we need to check into our hotel. But in Las Vegas, there's a law that, or maybe just generally, there's a law. But they didn't. They nobody knows this like type of law. There's a law that you can't check into a hotel unless you have someone over the age of 21. And this is a couple years ago. So everyone in that vehicle with us was under the age of 21. It was like four 20 year olds, and then me, and I was like, eight, I was like 19 or something like that. So it was like. We were, no, I was like 18 or something. So we were all like, we were all under the age to check into this hotel. And so we're like, there, we're like, we just drove nine and a half hours to get there. And immediately the first thing we're doing is just like a catastrophe. Like we're just sitting there. But uh, the, the, the nice lady at the front desk ended up letting us in into the hotel, which was really clutch of her. She was a real legend. She really facilitated this entire trip in a way. Um, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if they, she hadn't because we like knew someone that was in Las Vegas at the time that could have like come and checked in for us and like signed for us or something. But it would have been a big hassle. And so this lady really did come in clutch. So that was like the first little obstacle. On the way down to Las Vegas, we were, of course, listening to the Limited Resources. And in this Limited Resources podcast, they were talking about Hammond Get Sealed. And they specifically highlighted a strategy where you just – Gift of Paradise was a common. I mean, it was reprinted in M19 as an uncommon. But Gift of Paradise, you could just – if you had like three copies of Gift of Paradise, you could just play any card in your pool. So that will become relevant later as I talk about my own sealed experience. But that was essentially just a, a kind of a, a funny thing that we all we did on the way down. And while we were all on the way down, my brother, my older brother, hadn't actually seen any of the cards from Amonkhet yet. So he literally learned every card in Amonkhet on the way down, uh, which was pretty impressive as well. So we've gotten to there. We've gotten to the hotel. We're getting ready to go. And in my sealed deck, I, of course, have three copies of Gift of Paradise. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm doing exactly what Marshall told me to do in this limited resource. This is, of course, my, of course, my first Grand Prix. And I'm just cruising. I'm crushing these people. I get to 3-0. and And who should confront me when I get to 3-0 and but none other than the legendary Frank Karsten. And Frank Karsten is an MTG Hall of Famer. He writes articles all the time about like math and stuff. And he's, he's coming off of his three buys from being like a Hall of Famer or whatever in the Grand Prix. And I get to play against the Hall of Famer in my for my first ever time. And I am, of course, this is my first Grand Prix. I'm just super excited. I'm like, oh, I'm playing against such a famous player. And I'd, like, read his articles a couple times before. But I wasn't, like, super, like, I, I like, knew who he was. So I was, like, so happy I got to play against him. And I beat Frank Karsten in this MTG Grand Prix. And the, the one line I remember is after the match, we were, I, we were talking about the match a little bit. And he had, like, a cruel... Um, cruel uh not ultimatum cruel something in play harsh reality cruel reality or something it was like an enchantment that made you sacrifice a creature and to win the game i like sacrificed a creature embalmed a different creature killed him with my flyer to win the game three and it was just a super crazy game um and i was super proud of myself and after the game he, he has a uh dutch accent and after the game we were talking he was like that was the correct line and of course this is my uh my playmat i'll pull it up for you folks here um my playmat I, at the time, it was my, like, favorite play night because it was from a game day that I had won. Uh, the only game day that I had won, it was, like, I played, like, two game days overall before they got rid of game day, I think. But um, this is my play mat right now. Um, it's, like, my one of my – it's, like, my favorite thing, my favorite possession. And uh, I don't know where Frank Karsten's signature is specifically on here, but um, uh, he signed it, and he was the first person to sign this play mat. Um, so it was a really cool moment. It's got a lot of signatures on here. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, a really cool thing that happened. So I come, I'm fresh off the heels of beating Frank Karsten and I run up against another famous MTG 
member of the community. I play against David Ochoa in the next round, and David Ochoa is uh, he's he's a known member of the MTG community, but he's a little bit lesser known. So I I like heard the name, but I wasn't sure who he was, and so we we're playing our match, and in game three he like top decked uh, a like cartouche of zeal to give his creature haste to win the game or something on like some crazy turn so i lost to david ochoa and the the me the walking meme with me and my friends was that i only lost to david ochoa because he got lucky not, i mean that wasn't actually true like he probably he, it wasn't like i was going to win the next turn or anything but it, it felt like that to me at the time so that was just like a walking meme and of course after the match i'm this awkward guy i don't really know who this guy who this guy is but like i have an inkling he's kind of famous so i say uh you're kind of famous right uh, would you sign my playmat? Like, that was how I said it, too. It was, like, really awkward. Um, let's see if I can see where David Ochoa signed my playmat. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. um, yeah, there it is. Ah. Right here. Ah. David Ochoa. The Ochi. Yeah, it's not very easy to see, but David Ochoa signed my playmat, so that was pretty cool. Um, it's always cool to have those, uh, those little memories. Oh, there's Frank Karsten's signature. I found it. First one, Frank Karsten. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Um, so that was that. Was that. Uh, I played against him. I ended up the day seven and two, so I was pretty proud of myself. Um, everyone in my, everyone that I was uh, playing with was super proud. Of, like everyone was like super hyped. They were like, oh, seven and two, that's so great. My brother actually went three, three and one, which may not sound like an impressive record, but considering like he doesn't play magic all that often and he like hadn't even seen an Amonkhet card until the day before, three, three and one, pretty impressive. I mean, he, he went 50%, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so that was day one. Um, day two, I, I will say, um, was not the greatest experience for me. I had one kind of cool. I, I kind of day two. I'll I'll say I scrubbed out so hard on day two. I did not win a match on day two. This is two drafts, and I'm I'm good at drafts. I'd done a decent number of Amicat drafts. This was before I had like Magic Online, so I'd like draft like every week in my game store. I listened to limited resources all the time, so I knew what was going on, or I thought I knew what was going on in Amicat Limited, and I had like good decks too. But the thing was, was sometimes it's just not your day. So I think I like mulligan to four, three times. I mulligan to five multiple times. And so overall, I just like had like the worst luck possible. And it was just really like very like sad to just lose all of my matches. The only reason, so I started off seven and two. The only reason that I ended the tournament eight and eight was because my opponent didn't show up one round. So I was like, thank goodness I don't have to lose all these rounds. But I did get one cool memento. Um, in my second draft, I knew I wasn't going to get anything. So I did take this uh, Gideon of the Trials when I saw it. I, I rare drafted it. And if you look right there, that's a, a little like mark that they put on the cards to make sure that you don't like uh, cheat and uh, take other cards, like take the cards. So uh, and, and like add cards from your binder or something to the, do the pool. So uh, I did get a cool Gideon of the Trials memento from that. Um, and I, I still have it. So that was a cool experience for sure. And in the final round of, of the day. So I had like overheard people talking and apparently if you got to like 10 points or 10 wins in the tournament, you got a pro point. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I only had eight wins, so I wasn't going to get a pro point. But the guy that I was matched up against because a couple people had dropped, he had eight, uh, he had eight pro points. No, no, he had nine wins. So I, I, I was walking up to that table i knew i was going to concede to this guy but i still wanted to play to him and so the first words out of this guy's mouth are will you concede the match to me i get a pro point if i win and i that I, he says that i was like i was already going to do that i just wanted to play the match for fun and and then he continues and he says i need one more pro point to qualify for silver as a pro and i would really appreciate it if you so this is like this is not just a pro point for like honor or anything i was already going to concede to this guy this is the pro point for like like getting silver which is actually like a meaningful achievement and like actually matters so like i was like yeah i'll concede to you but i actually want to play out the match the guy beat me anyway but it was a fun match it was pretty close and uh, overall that was a blast uh, on the way back on the way back to the hotel that day we were talking in the car and someone said that they had overheard uh oops, wrong picture they had overheard someone say that <laughs> this is the funniest thing they had their kid with them and they said look look at this card her name's liliana too <laughs> And we all thought that that was the greatest thing. We started thinking about like all of the fun things that you can or could name your kid that was related to magic. And we remember that LSV named his kid Naya, which is which is a, a very pretty name. It uh, is of course the green, white, red 
co color combination is called Naya, but Naya is just a cool name. Anyway, and then all of a sudden, a, a new meme was born because one of my friends said, what if you named a kid Wooly Thoktar? Because, of course, inspired by Naya, Wooly Thoktar is also the Naya color combinations. So there's just the classic, your name's Wooly Thoktar too. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was just a funny moment. So, of course, the, the tournament's over. We're, uh, when, we're headed back home. And on the on this drive home, of course, as I showed you earlier, it's like a nine and a half hour drive. But this little region right here from Las Vegas to like Los Angeles, a lot of that is going through the Mojave Desert. And the Mojave Desert is a very hot place, I must say. So I told you I'd get back to this later. But on the drive back, the car was very old and the car ran out of coolant. And coolant is what's necessary to keep the car, car from overheating and your engine from breaking. And the car was in such a way that if you turned the air conditioning on, it would potentially ruin your, like, car its engine and stop the car from running properly. So we had, like, stopped at the gas station, and instead of putting coolant in, we had put water in, even though we ended up getting coolant. But the water didn't do anything, of course. So now we have a full tank that's supposed to have coolant in it, but instead of coolant, it has water in it. <laughs> And so we can't put the coolant in until the water has, like, evaporated or something. So we're driving through the Mojave Desert. And for context, this is what the Mojave Desert looks like. We're driving through the Mojave Desert with no air conditioning. It's this tiny little car. There's five of us in it. So it's pretty much jam-packed all of us in this car in the hottest weather. This weather is, like, 115 degrees. It's the Mojave Desert in the summer. And we're just driving through. This was the literal, like, worst car ride I could ever have had. It was like, the, what the heck is this happening? It was like 110 degrees outside. We're in this car with no air conditioning. If we turn the air conditioning on, the car is going to break down and we'll never get out of there. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was the uh, pretty much the crazy. That was it was a crazy trip overall. I really enjoyed going to Grand Prix Las Vegas. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that story with all of you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, let me know what maybe what your first Grand Prix experience was like in uh, the comments below. And uh, that is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.